welcome, welcome, welcome. So I am Dr. Patricia Mills, and I am a medical doctor, a functional medicine practitioner, and a health transformation expert, and a pas and passionate advocate for helping women like you thrive and not just survive, because we need more women who are um, just, you know, doing it all, like uh, succeeding in their um, friends, family, finances, fun. Uh, we need more of that really lovely feminine energy out there, particularly in the business world, but in every aspect of society. So I am, um, I often go live in places like this to teach women like you um, how to do things like balance your hormones, because a lot of us are suffering from very imbalanced hormones. And one of these reasons, one of the reasons why we're imbalancing our hormones is um, we're going to be talking today about like the topic of what I was going to talk about today was um, balancing blood sugar. So balancing the levels of sugar in the blood in order to balance our hormones because our hormones are very interesting. They don't just float around on their own, unaffected by each other. They're more like, um, you know, um, kids in the schoolyard playing Ring Around the Rosie, and if one falls down, the rest fall down. That's what happens. So if one hormone gets out of whack, the other hormones get out of whack too because they are interconnected, all right? And so when you um, imbalance your hormones, it, there's many like different roads lead to Rome, all right? And what can happen is that you if you imbalance one hormone let's say there's like the hormone insulin which is your blood sugar hormone and then there's the hormone estrogen which we all are very familiar with as women and there's testosterone which is like your libido um, muscle strength hormone progesterone which is your chill pill hormone estrogen is that vivacious curvaceous full lips full skin full you know full bodied female body kind of hormone um, and then the depending on what stage of life you're in progesterone is like your pregnancy hormone and in menopause it's your feel-good hormone and when you have imbalances in those hormones you start to not feel so good you start to feel irritable you start to feel short-tempered um, you start to age prematurely if you're in your menstruating years you might have some um, like painful uh, menstruations very heavy periods irregular uh, premenopausal syndrome you might be trying to get pregnant and you can't get pregnant difficulties maintaining a pregnancy and carrying it to full term um, if you have menstrual imbalances during menopause, like perimenopause, around menopause, you can have a lot of craziness going on with your body, like hot flashes and mood swings and, you know, your periods all over the place. You can start getting worsening headaches or new headaches, and, you know, all those things. And then if you have menstrual uh, hormonal imbalances in uh, postmenopause, um, you can have like, you know, you're not feeling so good. Again, you're ang angry, short-tempered, um, premature aging. Your golden years are not your golden years anymore. Um, and at the extreme, you can get the hormonal imbalance uh, associated diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's is known to be associated with imbalanced hormones and women are very susceptible to getting Alzheimer's. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is a hormonal imbalance. Um, and what all of those have in common, by the way, cancer, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and Alzheimer's, as well as um, type 2 diabetes, is the imbalance of the hormone insulin, okay? And insulin is the hormone of sugar, all right? And what happens is that when we eat a food that contains carbohydrates, um, that food, that carbohydrate turns into um, a, sh a sugar, a kind, you know, there's different kinds of sugars, but it turns into sugar and that gets released into our blood. So from our gut into our blood and what our body sees in the blood causes a reaction in the pancreas, which is the organ that makes insulin. And our pancreas makes insulin so that the body can then take that sugar from the blood and put it into our cells so that the cells can use the sugar for energy. And in an ideal scenario, you're eating these um, foods that have like a slow release of sugar into the blood. So, in, you know, you get like, if you look at the amount of sugar in the blood, it like goes up a little bit and then the, in, and the pancreas makes a little bit of insulin and the insulin takes, you know, there's enough insulin to put the sugar into the cells and, the, and then the sugar goes down again, okay? 
what's happening in our society now, modern day eating the standard American diet, is that there's a lot of foods out there that have been processed in a way that the sugar content is suddenly released into the bloodstream in large amounts. So I call them fast carbs, where the body, it's like the body sees this, it's like you eat your and the fast carbs are refined flours. So you take a whole grain like wheat or rice or oat um, and you refine it until it's a very fine flour powder. Or you take um, a vegetable like um, um, corn and beets and cane and you turn it into a sugar, a very refined sugar, whether it's brown or white, it's very refined. And that powdery flour and sugar is a quick release of sugar into the bloodstream. And, um, and it, what you see is a very, very, very high spike. And what happens is when the blood sugar goes up that quickly and that high, the pancreas has to create a lot of insulin to deal with that because the body tries to keep the, the levels of nutrients in our blood within a certain range. That's its job, okay? And so what happens is you get a massive release of insulin and that gets the, 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 the cells then open themselves up to the sugar. The sugar rushes in and all of a sudden you go from very, very high sugar to like all of a sudden the blood sugar tanks very, very low. And what happens is it overcompensates. The blood sugar now goes too low. So remember the Goldilocks zone is here. You've gone above what you want and now you're dipping below what you want like really low and then uh, some people will even experience like feelings of hypoglycemia low blood sugar so they feel jittery and they feel low like you kind of feel like like kind of sweaty and anxious and like fatigued and like you know like you might even faint maybe even nauseous and that creates a vicious cycle because then you go to eat something and if again if you're eating the same kind of like you know in the category of fast carbs um, then you're propagating that other spike in low. So whenever you have a low blood sugar, that means before that you had a blood sugar that was too high. If you eat what I call slow carbs, slow carbs are like um, vegetables, um, you know, sweet potatoes, um, carrots, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, eggplants, tomatoes, pumpkins, all those sorts of things. If you have a whole grain like a white basmati rice that has not been turned into rice flour, that's a slow carb. Um, basically, anything that is still packaged in the way that Mother Nature packaged it, it it releases a, low, a little bit of, you know, a, you get that low increase of blood sugar and then down and it's like a beautiful kind of wave, very gentle wave versus that what if you eat like pasta and pizza, pastries, crackers, cookies, protein bars have a lot of refined sugar in them. Um, um, smoothies have a lot of refined sugar in them you know it's the blender really cuts things up and makes it very easily accessible to the body and um, how do I know this well first of all the research shows it also because I'm a health transformation expert I have done uh, blood sugar monitoring myself using the finger prick method which is what a lot of diabetics use to measure their blood sugars and right now I'm actually using a continuous glucose monitor which is in my like on the skin with a little needle in the body. And I was worried about that actually because I'm afraid of needles. Um, but at, other than a small twinge when I first put it in, I don't feel it at all. I guess the body adapts. And then what I see is on my phone, I get um, a notification, like I down, I scan it and I get to see the blood sugar variations and what I've um, in, and I, I'm a published researcher by the way when I was working as a traditional Western medicine doctor I was also doing research it was like 50% of my work and I'm very good at reading research and so I like to confirm what I see in reading the research with you know testing on myself and I'm working with my clients and noticing these trends and sure enough when I have my fast carbs like my noodles or you know or let's say let's say I even have my nice bowl of oatmeal and I've put too much um, fruit in it or I've done like too much of a jam, even like a homemade jam with honey, and I see that blood sugar really rise. And um, and what happens is I know that's what happening. What's happening behind the scenes is that that insulin hormone now is being overproduced too frequently. What happens is over time, research is very conclusive on this, and you see this in in people, is that the pancreas gets um, 
a couple of things. The insulin hormone, when insulin is spiked too high, remember I said that the hormones are all connected? Well, that create that causes the stress hormone cortisol to be dysregulated. Like you oftentimes the cortisol levels will go up because that's a physical stress on the body. When you overstimulate the production of a hormone, the body gets stressed out. So now your cortisol level goes up. And when your cortisol levels go up, you have a dysregulation. Um, for example, in order to make cortisol, the body needs to use progesterone. So progesterone is a building block for cortisol. So if your cortisol production goes up, your progesterone levels go down. Remember, progesterone is like your feel-good, chill hormone, right? So not good. And if, you, if that keeps happening over time, eventually the body will have to start using the building blocks that are used to make estrogen and testosterone to feed it into the progesterone to cortisol pathway. So you start to get imbalances your near estrogen, testosterone, progesterone because you're overproducing cortisol to, uh, because in reaction to insulin. And then there's also really interesting things that happen, like I mentioned polycystic ovarian syndrome. Well, how does that tie into insulin? Well, at the level of the ovaries, if the ovaries are overexposed to insulin, what happens is that they start to switch the way that they that they do hormone production and they start to make too much testosterone. And women who have polycystic ovarian syndrome, they have issues with fertility, they have issues with cysts on the ovaries, they have issues with facial hair, right? Too much testosterone and its byproducts, okay? Um, why did I mention Alzheimer's in relation to insulin issues? Well, um, Alzheimer's is now being called type 3 diabetes because if you overexpose a body to insulin over time, it becomes resistant to insulin. It's like I've, I'm being overexposed to insulin, so now I'm going to stop, like the, the receptors, like literally the receivers of insulin become like, you can think of it as like damaged or rusty. They're being overused. It's like a lock and key. Insulin is the key and the receptor is the lock. It's like you're jamming that key in over and over again. The lock gets damaged. So now you're insulin resistant, which means that the body can't open up the cells to get the sugar in. And now you have like an energy crisis where the cells themselves don't have enough energy. And um, Alzheimer's is really an energy crisis of the brain, right? So they've done autopsies on people with different stages of Alzheimer's. And what you see is that um, from mild Alzheimer's all the way to severe Alzheimer's, you get a little bit of insulin resistance, more severe insulin resistance, and very severe insulin resistance. And what's kind of fascinating is that if you get insulin resistance due to too many fast carbs in your diet, rep like repeatedly causing your pancreas to pump out the insulin, the, uh, most people will experience that as diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So it's insulin resistance at the level of the muscle. If you have insulin resistance at the level of the brain, that can turn into Alzheimer's. So whether you get the insulin resistance in the brain and or the muscles, that can be due to genetic um, vulnerability. Like you might be more predisposed to get the insulin resistance in different parts of the body right? And some people will get the polycystic ovarian syndrome where you start to have that insulin resistance impacting the function of the ovaries, okay? But what's very interesting is that if you don't, you don't know what you don't know, like I, I um, have, you know, I'm, I'm really into nutrition, obviously, as a health transformation expert, helping women change their diets, creating personalized supplement protocols, helping them naturally detoxify. And when I started monitoring my own blood sugars, I was really surprised to see that my body was responding to certain things in ways that I had no idea. Like, for example, if I drink coffee in an empty stomach, my blood sugar spikes because it's a it's a too much um, caffeine causes um, is like a little stress on the body, particularly on an empty stomach. It causes cortisol to be released, and if you increase cortisol that increases your blood sugars. It's like this, again, remember the interconnectedness of the body. So exercising on an empty stomach can do that as well. Um, if I, and the other really interesting things, if I took like a sweet potato and I baked the sweet potato and I ate it right away, my blood sugar could spike quite high because sweet potato has um, more, is more starchy than like, let's say broccoli, right? 
Um, but if I took that sweet potato and I cooled it down and I put it in the fridge and I heated it up the next day, my blood sugar didn't spike as high because there's this really lovely chemical reaction that happens with, within the starchy carbs when you cool it down that it turns into resistant starch, which is more of a slow carb than a fast carb. And it, and it means your body um, doesn't cause this huge spike in blood sugar. But by monitoring my blood sugar, um, it's been very motivational for me to like, actually, it's like a window into the body. Um, and as I've been able to balance my blood sugars out more effectively, I've noticed that my, my, hormone is, my hormones are so much better. And, and what, does that, what does that feel like? Better sleep. You know, sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night, like around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, just kind of like alert. And now that doesn't happen anymore. And that's because I don't have that like spike and then dropping down of blood sugar in the middle of the night, which causes cortisol to be released as well. That's a stress on the body and cortisol is an awakening hormone. So I'm not like awakening in the middle of the night because I have better blood sugar balance. My periods are just so much smoother. Like I don't, I used to get like really heavy hemorrhagic periods, very painful. That's you know, gone. And there's other things I've done for that as well. Um, but that I, I do believe that um, my, balancing my blood sugars is a crucial piece of it. And I and it gives me the peace of mind now that I figured out what works best for my body, um, that I'm not setting, I am setting myself up for um, really optimal health for the long term, because my goal for myself and for my clients is health span. You want to live for as long as you can in the best health as possible. I want to die very healthy. Like I want to like, you know, in my 80s or 90s, like ha have like, you know, pass away in my sleep, you know, and be in my own home and not in a long term home being like spoon fed with a diaper, you know, as a specialist in physical medicine and rehabilitation, that was my training in Western medicine, I go into long term care facilities to help people manage their, you know, overactive muscles and the pain that came from that. And it broke my heart, you know, it breaks my heart to see people suffering from Alzheimer's suffering from dementia not being able to live at home, you know, in their the later years of their life and having to go into long-term care. Um, sometimes it's inevitable, but I do believe that most of the times it is, uh, it is preventable. And the interesting thing is that every person responds uniquely. Like I work with some clients and some of them, um, you know, they have their oatmeal for, for their breakfast and their blood sugar responses are really even keel, like very nice and even. And some people, their blood sugar just skyrockets. It has to do with like the integrity of their cut gut. Um, what's the status of their microbiome, which is the organisms in the gut that help us digest our food. Um, what's the genetic predisposition? So, um, you know, you can't guess. You have to test for this particular thing. I'm not a big fan of testing or of hormone testing in all circumstances, but this is one circumstance in which I think that hormone test, uh, that testing for um, an indirect measure of testing insulin. So you can't actually test insulin this way. Um, you can ask your um, doctor, a functional medicine doctor, a naturopathic doctor for what's called the fasting insulin level. That's one way to test the insulin hormone. Um, you do have to pay out of pocket for it because it's not part of like, uh, you know, preventative care, at, at least in Canada where I live, that's not something that's covered. So you'd have to pay for out of pocket, but I do think it's a valuable test to do, but nothing really beats um, monitoring your blood sugars, not forever, but long enough to understand how your body is responding to certain food. And the thing to understand is that your body will respond to uh, different foods differently at different phases of your life. So for example, the way my children respond to their foods is probably different from what I, how I respond at this stage of my life. And, um, you know, as I get older, after I go into menopause one day, I'm going to retest my blood sugars and see how they're doing. And I just wanted to show you um, an example of what it looks like here. So this is my um, blood sugar monitor and I, I've been experimenting to see. So for example, I ate an, an apple, just like a, a whole apple and my blood sugar response was pretty good. I baked an apple 
okay? And look how the yellow means that my blood sugar went above the recommended range. And you can see here that after I ate that apple, my blood sugar really spiked. Um, another thing I wanted to show you here was that I was experimenting with my oatmeal in the morning. And you can see here this big spike. That's when I put a little bit of jam in addition to my blueberries because I make this homemade jam with honey. I really love it. I wanted to know if it was okay for me to have jam with it. And my body is telling me that no, just the, just the blueberries, fresh blueberries, no jam with the oatmeal is much, much better. And you can see here that um, it, this morning um, over here was when I ate my um, my oatmeal and that was fine. Like my body was fine with just the oatmeal and the blueberries um, and that was good. And another thing that I've learned by monitoring my blood sugars is that the very best thing I can do um, after eating is actually to go for a walk, like even 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, and that's the difference between my blood sugar, um, like it actually decreases my blood sugar by like 20 points, like it's it's amazing. Um, and that's because when you activate your muscles, your muscles then need, um, will like suck up the sugar from your blood. And one of the reasons you want the sugar in your blood to stay down is because excess sugar will stick to your body and cause early aging all right literally like sugar in your blood is sticky and it will go and you'll it'll stick to your like your blood vessels and to your tissues and that's one of the reasons why we start to get like aging and brown spots and all that kind of stuff and um one test for early for like determining if you're diabetic is they take what's called the hemoglobin a1c hemoglobin is your red blood cell that carries oxygen around in your body and they'll look at how much how much sugar is stuck to it and um, you want to have like less than six percent of it covered with sugar um, and once you start to get like more um, sugar floating around the bud because your body becoming more insulin resistant so it can't get rid of the sugar as well the, the sugar in your blood starts to go up and up and up and up even like the average sugar in your blood is going up even when you haven't eaten there's a, more sugar in your blood because the um, cells are less are more resistant to that insulin hormone so the cells aren't opening up even the muscle cells even if you go for a walk the muscle cells won't open up as well as they could if they were sensitive to insulin and so the blood sugar sticks around higher in your blood um, and that damages the body so you really, really, really want to do everything you can to keep your blood sugar in that Goldilocks zone, okay? And that's by eating slow carbs, not fast carbs, um, making, um, getting out for a walk after your meals if you can, um, and becoming familiar with your own unique body response. Now, um, this is so important that when I do my program uh, Body Wisdom with my clients, which is the way that people can work with me one-on-one -on -one as a health transformer expert we do blood sugar monitoring together it's something that we do um, we we track the personalized blood sugar response because again every person has a different response to the foods that they eat and even the time of day that you eat will change your blood sugar balance so if you eat something sugary at night your blood sugar will go higher than if you ate that same food in the middle of the day because your body is naturally more sensitive to the hormone insulin which regulates blood sugar at in the noon time around noon time than it is in the evening time so um, if you know you want to give yourself like a treat for the day some tips are um, eat it at around noon time if you can versus around dinner time eat it after you eat like uh, vegetables because the fiber from the vegetables will coat the lining of your gut so less sugar will get into your body and uh, best 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 tip is go for a walk so if you go for like a, a lovely dinner with friends um, and if you have the opportunity to afterwards like you let's say you have your dessert whatever Go for a walk after the meal and like continue your conversation walking outside or let's say you're going to catch a cab home. Well, walk a little bit first and then ca call a cab to like another destination and catch it from there or walk around the block a few times just having a nice chat with whoever you went for dinner with before you hop into your car and drive home. You see these little things can make a really big difference for your blood sugar balance and remember from the beginning what can imbalanced blood sugar cause? It can cause imbalance in your hormones through the portal of the hormone insulin which affects your hormone estrogen testosterone and progesterone which can cause everything from menstrual irregularities like premenstrual 
all the way through to polycystic ovarian syndrome, to infertility, to perimenopausal suffering and menopausal mayhem. It's really like, it, it's so huge. And the cool thing is that it's one thing that we absolutely have control over. You know, you have control over your blood sugar based on what you put in your mouth. And one last tip I'm going to leave you with is that when you drink your sugar, it's worse than when you eat your sugar. So it's actually worse to have um, juice, like fruit juice for blood sugar control than it is to eat the fruit, right? And even like eat a gummy bear, because at least the gummy bear is like a little bit of gelatin. So oh, we are like, oh, fruit juice is so healthy and that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe like if it's like seasonal and it's summertime and and there's like, you know, it's the season for for like Concord grapes and someone squeezes a fresh, ju ju you know, jar of like Concord grape juice and you have a little bit because it's a treat and it's summertime. But if you have fruit juice out of season, that's a lot of blood sugar spikes. Another one is oat milk. Okay. Oat milk is a lot of refined carbs, a lot of fast carbs in there. So yes, it's gluten-free, which helps the gluten aspect, but it's very fast carbs and it imbalances your blood sugar and that causes the insulin spike, which causes the cortisol imbalances, which imbalances progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, all right? So I hope you found this helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments when you catch this either as a replay or you're watching this live. And um, if you ever want to reach out to me uh, to work with me as a health transformation expert, my email is info at drpatriciamills.com and I look forward to hearing from you. We can always book a discovery call and see if we're a good fit. So I hope you're having a wonderful day, evening or night, depending on when you catch this. Bye.